conversation to have with a retail brand. I'll tell you, just before we start, I have been listening in to a lot of these sessions this week. And what you feel throughout them, the common thread, it's optimism. People are feeling optimistic. And the Zoom fatigue is real, but you don't feel it on these, on these sessions. People are leaning in. There's energy in them. And I think that that is, uh, for me, it's a perfect segue into having a conversation with a leading retail brand. Retail is the, a bellwether industry, and it is going to lead us right out of this next economic cycle into what's next. So I'm Paul Suchman. I am the Chief Marketing Officer for Odyssey. We are a leading audio content and entertainment company with, and again, I may be biased, but I believe we have the best collection of radio stations, the fastest growing digital app, and the most wonderful collections of podcasts out there. Um, we're, and by the way, we're back in the, alive, in the live events business, and that is coming back when we couldn't be more excited. I'm joined by Craig and Ashley from American Eagle Outfitters. Um, so let's let's just get right to it here. Let's talk about that brand. Let's 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 take a moment and recognize the iconic brand that is American Eagle. Nearly 45 years of legacy, innovation, leadership. You're a true omni-channel retailer, over 900 stores, a powerful digital business. You're a socially connected business. And you, uh, you can actually speak with a person on the phone when you call. I know, I tried it yesterday. And it's, it's so every touch point is right there. So, and when some brands zig, you zag. So, so tell us about the brand, its evolution, its impact on culture, fashion, trends. We'd love to hear about it. Hey, Paul, first of all, it's great to hang with you and great to hang with Ashley in person. Timing is everything. This is the first week in the American Eagle office that we can show up if we're fully vaccinated and we don't have to wear masks. And it's kind of like a party here. We're, we're actually looking at summer 22 product this week. Um, and it's just kind of fun to, to kind of regain some bit of, of normalcy. But Paul, as you said, um, the American Eagle brand has been around for about 45 years. And it's been an interesting journey. As you know, I've had the privilege of leading global marketing for Gap, for Abercrombie, for Calvin Klein, among others. And as I reflect on those brands, they each had this white hot moment in American culture. And American Eagle has been a very steady presence in the American mall, but didn't quite have that white hot moment until right now. And I mean that. Um, I think that American Eagle and our sister brand, Aerie, have done something that other brands were not doing. And they started doing this two, three, four years ago, and I think we're really getting the credit for it now, is the ability um, to, to really be yourself and celebrate individuality um, and allow Gen Z to be, the, to be their true selves for themselves and no one else. Um, and that is the polar opposite, because I was there at the time that a and did and, and others. Um, and I think this idea of individuality has, has really cut through. I think the second thing is no one does jeans better than American Eagle does. Um, we were just looking at some new market share data. We're not only the number one selling jean for kids age 15 to 25, but we're now the number one selling jean for women of all ages in America. So I think that at our price point, at our quality, we're the best place um, for, for jeans. And then I think you said it, um, the, the return of the store is real. And I've never seen anything like it in my long retail career. But when March rolled around, when stimulus kicked in, when spring break kicked in, when the second back to school kicked in in part of the country, the return of the physical store happened. And right now we have traffic levels that have, have approached and often beating 2019 levels, which is a pretty impressive thing to say. That is awesome. Any trends that we should know about for 2022? I can't believe we're saying that for in, in jeans that, that we need to know. I, I'm, I've got my pen here. Dude, we're in a fashion denim cycle. Um, and so anything that, um, feels new, feels fresh, um, is something that our customer is gravitating towards. Um, the mom jean phenomenon really started here at American Eagle. That's clearly the, the biggest trend out there, but whether it's flair, whether it's 90s boyfriend, and for the guys out there, athletic skinny, I mean, these are really hot denim trends. Um, 
Um, and, and we've seen, as we reported on our earnings call just uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, a, a, an amazing resurgence in, in, in buying for jeans. That's awesome. That's awesome. So Ashley, if you think about this, the same question for, for the brand, and Craig mentions some of the different brands that you compete with as you go after different targets. How do you think about the positioning of this brand in a super crisp, succinct way? Like what is the lane that AE travels that other brands just can't own because of everything that Craig just talked about? When we think about our brand, American Eagle is youth culture. So when we talk about ownership and you talk about Gen Z, having the best genes, as Craig said in that amazing stat about the 15 to 25, but also women of all ages, and then becoming synonymous with youth culture puts you in a place with Gen Z that is very hard to compete with. So by staying innovative, by staying really relevant in terms of our brand, you know, Craig talked about some of our brand values earlier, but making sure we are really laser focused on those, but also laser focused on Gen Z, where they are, how they're spending their time. That's really what sets us apart beyond the amazing product. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's go, let's talk about that target a little bit. Um, when you talk about the product line from American Eagle and from Aerie as well, you cross gender, you cross age, you're geographically diverse, but also super precise when you're going in with specific products based on what they are. But as we just, just talked about, that sweet spot is Gen Z. And we know that this is perhaps the hardest audience to reach and to connect with authentically and in a way that's gonna resonate. Um, and we know that increasingly Gen Z is taking on buying power and influence on culture. So they are they are not just a, 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 an audience to pander to, they are an audience to cater to. And in fact, the last conversation with Adam and Keith, they were talking about Gen Z. But I think what's really amazing here in, in, in the conversations we've had and the research that I've done is uh, about American Eagle is that Gen Z loves you as much as you love them. And that's a really hard thing for a brand to achieve. So tell us about that relationship that with, with Gen Z, their consumption habits, how you're reaching them and breaking through all the clutter that surrounds them. And it's a two-way relationship. I think the audience would welcome those insights into building those relationships authentically and, and over time. I think when you think about Gen Z, the thing that I always try to remember is imagine if your entire life started sorry wrong way started with this device you never knew a world where that didn't exist where you could explore where you could connect where you could shop where you could educate everything happens from the palm of your hand and everything happens on social so when you think about gen z you need to think about access instantaneous the fact that everyone is a creator and has the ability to create in the palm of their hand that's how you connect with them that's social. And our job as a brand to cut through the clutter that you talked about is not only to be present on social, but to be relevant. That means creating the right content for the platform. That means connecting with the right influencers. You don't want to show up on these platforms in the wrong way, right? Nobody wants to show up like the soccer mom on TikTok. That's not what we're trying to do. We want to connect with Gen Z. And then you mentioned, Paul, this two-way conversation. That is very, very, very important. About 50% of our social feed is UGC. So that's content from our audience, from our kids, from our customers. We love that. And then lastly, I'd say hire Gen Z. We have a tremendous workforce here at American Eagle. We're obviously a very large brand. And over 75% of our store associates are actually Gen Zers. So you need to learn and listen from the audience themselves. That's awesome. So you, you mentioned user generated content, UGC. How do you do that in a way that also maintains a brand safe environment where you can monitor conversations and you can you can allow these conversations to happen organically and, and, and the expression of Gen Z to be there, but you're also doing it in a way that protects the enterprise and also protects the brand. How do you walk that line? That's a dance. 
right? Of course, we're always dancing, but you know, our, our audience is engaging in content. We're encouraging UGC that feels really authentic to us, really feels authentic to our kids that makes sense to them. You know, we create um, campaigns that we put out there to create the right type of content for us. That's optimistic as you kicked off this conversation. That's positive. We're putting good vibes out there. And especially now, we just want our kids to get out there in their jeans. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. So let's let's go. Let's talk about retail a little bit. And we know that the retail industry was one of the hardest hit during the pandemic, but it's also one that's rebounding more quickly and more stronger than ever. Um, but despite everything that happened um, during the pandemic, American Eagle had a record Q1. It was up over 170% for the same year over year period, which is just amazing. How, how did you, what happened and how are you taking everything that you learned and evolving that customer experience going forward? I think a wise person once said, never waste a good crisis, right? And, and to your point, Paul, unfortunately, our industry really did get hit hard last year. But, you know, looking at it at glass half full, the ability for brands like American Eagle to innovate, to go from ideation to execution, um, and to really deliver for the customer in a very compressed amount of time, I've never seen it in, in my professional career. I'm so proud of the work that the team has done here and, and things like buy online, pick up in store and curbside delivery. I mean, that's kind of now par for the course for our industry. But I think at American Eagle, we are in the leading edge of doing some other things. You can live video shop with a store associate from the comfort of your own home. You can sign up for um, live styling um, um, uh, shopping trips with an in-store associate. Um, we're doing events again, think about this. Um, and we're getting unbelievable response um, and kids are having a lot of fun and, and really buying a lot. Um, and I think that just shows you the resilience and innovation of this industry. And I think that again, American Eagle is firmly in the winner's column, but there are other retailers putting up good numbers as well. Um, and I'm really encouraged um, at, at where our industry will be going in the coming year or two. That's great. Did you um, did you find that during the, the pandemic, when the company went to a remote working environment, did innovation suffer? Did creativity suffer? Was it was it? It doesn't sound like it did because the sales are a, a clear reflection of the product and getting the product in front of the right people with the right message. It doesn't sound like it suffered. Yeah, to me, Paul. I, I, again, I, I hope and believe that humans always find a way and certainly this organization found a way. Um, and yeah, there were some learnings along the way. And, you know, you said at the top about Zoom fatigue, uh, you know, we're right there with you, but um, innovation happened at all levels of this company. Um, and some of the best ideas were actually coming from our most junior associates. So I think that um, what, what actually happened was the hurdles, the red tape, the why can't we do things was all, that was all kind of knocked down because we were in survival mode. And that's why we were able to bring so many innovative ideas to the market in such a quick period of time. That's great. So going back to the retail piece of this, let's talk about Omnichannel. And we, when we were preparing for this, we talked about that article that had a really strong headline about your role in, in the mall. But this is an Omnichannel brand. And so what is the role of e-commerce and in-store working together? Um, and also, what are some of the trends that we're going to see going forward in retail, right? Because the old norms of retail now, where we measured things like revenue per square foot, we're looking at metrics now around um, experience per square foot. So, so what is that future retail experience like? I think most companies, certainly this company, is not looking at it by channel now, physical versus digital. We look at it by customer. And the reality is Gen Z more than any other generation, you know, they're, they're shopping however, whenever, wherever they want to. And they're fluidly going between their device and that, and that store experience. And if we don't show up for them 
understand them, understand their personal um, um, needs and desires, we're going to fall flat. And, and again, just going back to some of the amazing things that our team accomplished during the pandemic period, we launched a new loyalty program in June of the pandemic. And you would think, oh my God, you know, you can't imagine a worse time to do that. Absolutely not. I mean, it, it, our loyalty program is the most successful launch I've seen. And certainly the numbers that we're um, talking to the street about are unbelievable as we approach more than 15 million uh, real reward loyalty customers. So again, it, I think if you take a customer focus, let's not worry about this Omni thing and, 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 and let's give them the, the experience they desire, again, whenever, wherever they want it. And so are you finding that cycle of, you know, we create a loyalty experience and in exchange for that loyalty experience, our customers are telling us about themselves and we're getting uh, opted in uh, approved data that we can actually then use going forward to marry with our first party data. How does the data work in that and how is it working to deliver even more value to those customers through the program? Again, just like you and I walked through a, a, a store that knew who you and I were 10 years ago, that's what we want to achieve now um, in the digital space as well. And we're finding that if we give personalized recommendations, personalized offers, personalized experiences, that we're going to get paid for it and the customer is really going to enjoy it. Um, and we'll continue to push ourselves on, on those in the, in the near future. Got it. Got it. So one more and just a, a last question uh, about the retail industry. Uh, and I guess this is more of a, a macroeconomic question. Today, just today, it was released that inflation, specifically consumer prices, jumped 5% in April, which is the fastest that inflation has accelerated since 2008. Um, and it's happening as surging demand from the reopening of the economy meets supply chains choked with shortages. Are you feeling any headwinds at AE from the challenges faced by global supply chains um, or potential price changes for, for consumers? You know what, we're certainly aware of what's going on in the macro environment, but we have a really badass operations team um, that has found a way to deliver the right product to the right store at the right time. Now, having said that, by far the biggest change that's happened in our industry in the last six months or so um, is pricing power. And the pullback on promotions is real. And to your point, Paul, most retailers, American Eagle being one of them, um, are buying a bit leaner in terms of, of inventory. And so you're seeing more full price selling. Um, but the customer so far um, has not blinked an eye because they are so excited to get back out into the real world express their own personality through the clothes that they wear. And then again, here at American Eagle, we have the, the good fortune of being in this fashion denim cycle um, where she's not just replenishing one jean in her drawer, she's buying five different fits um, to wear in different, uh, for different occasions. So um, again, certainly something we are keeping an eye on, uh, but we feel really well positioned um, as we head into the all important back to school season. And I'll remind everybody uh, listening to us now and watching us now that white jeans are, are good. We're in the season right there. So go for it. Um, and, and also to our participants, please, if you have any questions, put them into the question box at the bottom of your screen. And we will ask them uh, to Craig and to Ashley in, uh, in real time. Um, so let's let's we've been, we've been like dancing around marketing and I know that we're all we're all marketers here and everybody listening to us and watching us are marketers here so let's let's get that conversation moving in that direction um, understanding everything you've shared about the retail experience and your insights and your leadership and how you're reinventing it to be just more customer centric than ever and also understanding the consumption habits of Gen Z what are some of the media strategies that American Eagle is using to connect, to build brand, and to engage deeply with this audience? To connect with Gen Z is to love innovation and to love social. Those are, those are two critical components of it. And you know, one brand that we love that we have a great partnership with is Snapchat. They have over 280 million daily active users. It's a crazy number of people snapping all day. 
I want to share a short clip call that I hope that you have and you can bring up on the screen of some of the innovation work that we've done with Snapchat that I think really connects the marketing to some of what Craig said, which is really this merger of online, social, e-commerce, stores, doesn't matter. It's all one thing and we're all coming together through technology. So this is a, a denim guide that exists on Snapchat. Here's a virtual store experience where you can experience our store through Snapchat. It comes to life through experiences. And you could shop here, what's your summer bucket list? Really fun ways of getting kids out there and really engaging with them with the right content. Find your outfit on Snapchat. And the right content is really priority. It's not just about being on Snapchat because that's where our kid is. It's creating content and showing it to them how they want to engage. You know, a gene guide for many of us on this call would be more than fine to come in a catalog in our mailbox. And we would all scan through that and pull down the pages. But if you're a Gen Z or you want to see that on Snapchat, right? You want to click through it. You want to touch it. You can do it right from your phone, snap it to your friends and then buy it right there. It's creating a seamless experience from a media perspective that combines where they're spending their time with commerce in one action. And Snapchat is a great place to do that. Along with friends at TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and Twitch, which we're loving right now. Um, we're really deep in the gaming space to reach our guy. And of course, YouTube as well, which remains the number one social channel for our guy. Um, so we love that. And then I think, you know, it's also about influencers. Influencers are media today. Addison Ray, we have a long-standing relationship. She has been the face of many of our campaigns coming on a year now. She is a TikTok sensation. And when we did a partnership with her over holiday with Mickey Mouse, bringing together an iconic face of Mickey Mouse to somebody who's so modern, Addison Ray is iconic to Gen Z. She is a TikTok superstar. She is the queen of TikTok. And we brought them together for a duet. Two years ago, if I said duet, you would have a very different idea of what I was trying to say. Now, when you say duet, automatically we all think about TikTok. So that's really where we are right now, really focused on upper funnel, really pushing our brand and being highly present where our kid is, but with the right content. Yeah, um, that's awesome. When you talked about like snap it to your friends, like the role of, how does the role of social then come into that like social with each other as we were talking about you you know ugc how does that play with the conversations and and content that you're pushing out there it's a really good statement and a good question to ask because we know that our kids are always talking to each other so if you talk about a store environment traditionally in the fitting room experience and going with your friends or whomever you're going with there's that two-way conversation. Social allows for that. So just recently, about a month ago, we launched with Snapchat a beta for a connected lens where you could actually shop with your friend. So I could go through Snapchat into our store. I could snap my friend Craig and bring him shopping with me on the journey. Say, Craig, what do you think about these flare jeans? Do you love them? Do you not love them? This is what Craig and I do on the weekends. Um, but that's all part of it. And social, as I said, when we first talked about Gen Z, it allows you to do so many things. You can engage with a brand. You can learn about it. It could be your first introduction to the brand all the way down to commerce to sharing with your friends. And I do want to remind everybody that Craig gave us that tip that flare jeans are coming in. So right after this, I'm going to head out and get my on, on call right now. You thank you, thank you for that. So a question came in that's that's related here from Kim, and she's asked me the question, Paul. You're you're an audio brand. Uh, you are an audio brand. What is the role of music, and what is the role of sound in these experiences, particularly around the influencers, right? Because a lot of the influencers you're talking about, um, they have their podcasts, they have their music, they have their acting, but sound is part of their brand experience. How does sound play into the brand experience that you're delivering? Sure, at AE, we love sound on. Sound on is really important to us because obviously TikTok, sound on platform, but also music is one of the number one passion points for our kid. And when you talked earlier about 
did we lose innovation during COVID and the pandemic? We were a brand who was highly present in live festival music. And we had to find a way to engage with audio, to engage with music when that didn't exist. And that's where things like advertising on Spotify, advertising on SoundCloud, even playing on YouTube and Twitch in the music space. I mean, Twitch started out really focused on gaming and now the music space has really, really taken off. So for us, audio is not just, I think everyone now associates with, with podcasts because it's such a hot topic, which is definitely something that we're seeing a rise in Gen Z. And we definitely saw a year on year increase. I think it about doubled for Gen Z. We're seeing the content around podcasts, to your point, start to evolve. Gaming, people like Addison Ray even have their own podcast. So we'll continue to start to test and learn in that space. But right now for me, audio is really about music. It's about advertising in those spaces and really connecting to a passion that we know our kid loves. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And what about, so then you, we've talked about music. How does, does that affect or influence the content strategies you have and the ongoing stories that you're telling? Um, whether you're telling them through sound or, or, or through written word or, or visuals? We're always inspired by music and by creators. And I think one of the things, not to bring up our friends at TikTok again, but that's so amazing is we saw really this trend of how you connect visual and audio together in TikTok. And I think that's one of the most special things about that platform. So you can have a voice of genes like we launched um, last season where you're associating a visualization of a product with the sound that's trending on TikTok. And that really, I mean, we all know what happens when you hear a sound and you create an association. It might've been a jingle for all of us back in the day, but for our kids, TikTok, they have these trend sounds and we need to really tap into those and connect them with our brands. Um, everything, as, as a Gen Z oriented brand, you are always on the forefront. So to ask what your innovation agenda is may be a little redundant because everything is an innovation agenda. But as we're, as we're, as we're starting into the second half of the year, right, and, and optimism abounds, right, and, and, and we're coming back. What's on, what's on the horizon? Is there anything that you're working on from a marketing perspective, from a media perspective, from a sound and audio perspective um, that uh, is worth sharing and inspiring our, our viewers today? I'm giving secrets today? Well, you don't have to give no, secrets. You can, you can leave out the names if you need to protect the innocent. We'll bring up our sleeve, and I don't want any of our competitors to hear about them before we bring them to market. But I think to your point, Gen Z keeps you on your toes all the time. And so whether it's ways to shop, whether it's the unbelievable, unbelievable digital innovation to actually bring team or bring to the table is, is we're constantly thinking about innovation here, right down to the very product. So um, stay tuned for, for more. I know that was the biggest non-answer we've ever given, sorry. Fair enough. How about this question then? I, and I appreciate that, but everything you're talking about, it is like your whole agenda is an innovation agenda. You are, you are proprietors in what's next now. And I think that that is and a very exciting space to play in, but it's also high pressure space to play in. So very much appreciated. One of the things that you did during the pandemic was launched a major brand. Last July with Aerie, um, you launched Offline by Aerie. Um, and you did it during the pandemic in the remote environment. How did you do it and what did you learn doing that? I think our sister brand, Airy, is not just a brand, it's a movement. Um, and, you know, from the moment that um, Airy decided not to retouch its photography and really celebrate real women all the time, that brand um, has quickly become the fastest growing concept in, in, in North America. And there's so much passion behind um, that, that brand that there's opportunities to continue to grow offline being one of them. Offline is a more athleisure focus um, for um, the, the, the Airy brand and had this amazing, truly viral TikTok moment where a creator um, posted a, a video of herself in an Airy offline crossover legging. It went viral, truly went viral because my high school sophomore daughter came to me and said, boy, you guys are sure smart. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she showed me what, what she was talking about. And now we can't keep um, this, this particular legging in stock. Um, so we just think that 
overall, when you think about America, you have the portfolio of brands, whether it's the mother brand, whether it's area, offline, unsubscribed, et cetera, we are really well positioned to, to take advantage of the future of, of retail um, because we know what these brands stands for. We're as close to the customer as we possibly can be. We're authentic. And honestly, it's an amazing culture here at American Eagle. Great people to work with. We have fun doing this. Got it. Um, it's a great success story. Um, a question came in, which is which is somewhat related to this about your marketing uh, st uh, strategy tactics from a, a very good marketer himself, Ken. Um, how are you thinking about the future of voice and the ability to leverage interactive voice for commerce, for advertising? We're moving towards a screenless computing environment and the next generation of computing is going to be screenless and more voice driven. You're seeing that in the automobile. You're seeing that with home speakers. You're seeing the way people interact with products now. And we were talking about that a little bit about the, how a brand sounds. So how is uh, American Eagle thinking about that for the future? You know, Paul, we're definitely playing around with it, but I will say we have always been a visual industry. And so I think that the trick will be is how do we connect voice with the visual nature of the apparel industry? Um, and voice to date has been great in this replenishment environment. And, and maybe, you know, your favorite, you know, fit of jean, you know, your size and, hey, you know, Alexa, get me my American Eagle flare jeans or whatever it is. Um, but we have, we have traditionally found more success on platforms that bring visual to life as well. And potentially, you know, partners uh, like, like Google and others can help bridge, bridge the, the divide between voice and, and visual in the future. I wonder, you know, Ashley, you said something about these top of the funnel tactics. I wonder if voice has a play, if, and you're right, right? You, you, have, um, you have to see the product, you have to feel the product, you have to touch the product. But is there a role for voice as you move further down the funnel and you get into deeper engagement and transaction and commerce? I wonder if it plays if it plays there a stronger role. Yeah, we played a little bit around, but I would be remiss not to mention, you know, the SEO team has done a tremendous job with voice. It's pretty amazing. Um, I was on a call with them the other day and they actually were testing on their home devices, you know, find Kirby jeans as an example and seeing what comes to life. So I definitely think there is innovation there, there's technology there, we're playing with it. I think to Craig's point, getting the customer there to be confident enough in making a voice purchase, I think it's just a mindset shift. And maybe it is for you know our best customers, maybe it is for loyalty and there is a voice component there, but it is, I mean, even take the pandemic for all of us, we love virtual, we love technology, we love commerce, but all of us know when you walk into a fitting room and you can touch and feel a product that you're gonna put on your body, especially a pair of jeans, you really wanna see it and touch it. So I think it'll just be, it's time, right? It's people getting used to that type of technology for a different um, category. Um, yeah, and je jeans especially, right? You know, jeans like like all th the three of us, we can't help but look great in all pairs of jeans, but we know the world is, is um, you know, everybody has their own uh, jean fit. Um, it's the, 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 it's, I was about to tee up a question and Lizzie put in almost the exact same question. I want to read what she said and then ask this question because you can feel it on this session. And Lizzie said, you can tell you both really love working for AE. It's fun to watch. And this is a dynamic team. This is during our prep. We talked about leading with purpose, leading with kindness about being mindful and present and and that conversation really stuck with me as we were prepping for this so uh, how are you doing this how are you creating this this winning environment not only in your marketing world but across the organization what is what's happening there at AE that is making it such an amazing place yeah Paul you know whether you walk through the front door of our building here or you jump on a zoom call I think our philosophy is we spend more time with the people we work with than our own families, and we better ha have fun doing it. Um, and, and make no mistake, um, we want to win. We are winning. Um, and Ashley and I and other leaders push our team, but we're going to do it in a way that should be joyful, authentic, and fun. And I mean, I laugh just as much as I sit down and bang on a presentation here. Um, and 
um, it's it's a lot of fun. And I think again, you know, going back to, we know what these brands stand for. We have clarity around that. We know what we want to achieve, um, and and we have a lot of fun. And and because it's Gen Z, they keep you on your toes. They have a lot of fun as well. So I just I don't know if you want to if there's anything else. No, I, I agree with everything that Craig said. You know, fun fact: Craig started here during the pandemic. So we met once for a quick dinner and then really hadn't spent any time together. And I think, you know, as a leadership team, I've never had a group of people who I actually forget about professionally, like personally, we actually really like each other. And I think that really helps bring the fun that Craig talks about, but we're all really focused on our job. We love what we do. We love Gen Z. We love coming here, coming here every day. Um, and we respect each other. I think that's a really big thing. There's a lot of respect for, for what all of us do, but you're right, we, we all do love it here. That's awesome. So Ritesh, you're back with us. This is an amazing conversation, a great group of people. I know you've got your jeans ready. Um, well, I mean, one. I, I've, got, I've got my jeans, I've got my chunky snow you know, sneakers. I've got like, you know, so here's a fun story for you. I also have a high school sophomore um, in the family. And recently we all watched the Friends reunion, like, you know, a lot of uh, people around the world. Um, and, you know, we're just commenting about the cast and, you know, what has changed since then. And recently she watched the entire Friends show all seasons, um, you know, as a 15 year old. And I asked her at the end of that, I said, what do you really appreciate? And she goes, Rachel can really dress. <laughs> and and then and then she goes all of those trends are coming back and a lot of them are on AE right <laughs> and so it's like you know it, it it's almost exactly what you said Paul you know it's like when you have a brand that is actually innovation I mean there it, it's it's part of the culture and and that you are so connected to your consumer base is almost like you're anticipating their need before um, you know it even happens and so amazing.